this show, Crossing Over, really um, helped me to understand that we still do have that connection. We're both avid watchers of the show. Sarah, more so than myself, I've just now really gotten into it heavily. I'll sneak in the bedroom and watch it without her knowing. And uh, it's been very influential for me as well. Welcome to Crossing Over. I'm John Edward. The couple you just saw was A.J. McLean and his fiancée, Sarah. And for all of you who don't recognize A.J. without his comrades, he's one-fifth of the group that drives My Little Cousins Wild, the Backstreet Boys. And although the Backstreet Boys have sold millions of records worldwide and have enjoyed mass marketing success, A.J.'s personal journey hasn't been without a few bumps. And one of those obstacles has been coping with the loss of his grandmother, Ursula. On a previous episode, we showed you the group session I held at A.J.'s home, but focused on fellow bandmate Brian Littrell and his wife, Leanne. And now it's AJ and Sarah's turn. Take a look. While we're doing this, you know, the hard part is not to react, especially if you got family coming through and you're just like, you know, like, oh my God, that's my, try not to react. <laughs> I mean, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. And it's not important that I understand it while it's happening. Um, it's more important that you know that you didn't say anything, you didn't, you know, lead me into an area, you know what I'm saying? I have to protect the integrity of your experience for you because sometimes people get so excited in the session that, you know, they'll just like say 5,000 different things. And the more you say, the harder I have to work and the less uh, that they can use. AJ. So, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no. <clears throat> I'll be good. So, the first thing I want to do is I'm coming over here. I have an older female that's coming through. What I have to see is either being mother and grandmother, but I have an older female that's coming through. There's a connection to November, which either means that the 11th month or the 11th of a month has some type of meaning from what they want me to acknowledge. And I also feel like somebody's dad's passed because they're making me feel like I've got a father who has crossed. So there's an older male that comes through here as well. They're also making me feel like there's a celebration that's coming. So I don't know if there's like a wedding, there's an engagement, there's a, a marriage, there's a coming together that happens within the family that they want me to acknowledge as well. Where's the Joseph come in? That's my grandpa, my father's father. Who's passed? He's passed. Okay, because that's, that's, that's where we're going, okay? And so then connected to Joseph, <coughs> I've got to go on your mom's side of the family for the older female, because I want to split it, okay? Did you know Joseph? Oh, yes. Okay. Is there a reason why he would say that either he gave you a different name or <laughs> that I should refer to you by a different my, name? I have his middle name. My middle name is Joe. Okay. Yeah. Because I feel like I have to connect that. Besides your dad, there's another son for him? No. You sure? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to disagree. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's telling me he's got two boys. Where does the rose come in? Or Rosie, or the RL for you? Ra my mom is Roxanne. RL is her first name? Yeah, RL. Okay, mm -hmm. it's still here? Yes. Now, besides Joe, there's an Anthony as well. Or the Angelo. Where's the A? Um, he has a granddaughter, Angela. Living? Mm-hmm. Did, did he not see her in life? Never met her. Okay. He's insisting that he's got two sons. Are there only two grandsons? Yes. So there's only two? Okay. Yes. Because he's acknowledging both boys. Mm -hmm. And he's putting them side by side. Yeah. So I need to, but they're here then? Yes. Okay. Now, mom's mom, or the older female on mom's side family, has to be here. I mean, crossed, because they're coming here. So then, my, my grandmother. On your mom's side? My mom's okay, side, Okay, yeah. because that would make sense as to why he keeps saying that makes sense. Okay. Now, that means that her husband passed way a long time ago, or she's got a brother that's like a long, long time ago that had crossed before. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Okay. She steps forward, and whenever somebody steps forward, it's kind of like their way of letting me know He's here for me, I'm here for him. And I feel like that's important. This is a, st a stern feeling. I have a stern energy around her. So even though that, you know, I'm sure she's your grandmother and she's a loving lady, this is a strict woman. This is not somebody that I'm feeling, yeah. you know, <laughs> I'm gonna bake you cookies. This is somebody who I feel like, step out of line, I'm gonna smack you. It's like, that's the, I have a very, very strong energy. Stern is the feeling that I wanna use. John's reading with AJ and Sarah will continue. But first, here's AJ on his grandmother's no-nonsense personality as he and Sarah tell us about the messages so far. She was just a very powerful woman. She was very strong, very strong-headed, very strong-minded, and had a big, huge heart. Heart of, heart of platinum, platinum gold heart. She was awesome. 
I took over the same thing like her with the real strong-headed stubbornness where I didn't want to show that I was really appreciative of her being there, but I was. You're also making me feel like there's a celebration that's coming, so I don't know if there's like a wedding, there's an engagement, there's a, a marriage. We didn't really react to it at first because it was, I, I thought he was talking about somebody else, but you know, I didn't look at the obvious, which is that we're getting married <laughs> in February. I'm like, okay, well, duh, you know, so, but yeah, he nailed it on the head. It was awesome. Where's the Joseph come in? Um, Joseph is my grandfather, so that was just really shocking and amazing, and I was really hoping to connect with him, and I knew that, that it was happening when he said Joseph right away. When we return, the messages bring A.J. face to face with a difficult childhood memory. Your grandmother then is making me feel, and I'm sorry to put you on the spot, especially in front of like cameras, but... As you've seen so far in today's show, Backstreet Boy A.J. McLean and his fiance Sarah both received messages from their grandparents. Sarah's grandfather Joseph came through her at the top of the reading, but A.J.'s grandmother didn't miss the opportunity to send messages to her grandson during the rest of the session. She also didn't miss her chance to get him to admit he was uh, not a fan of frogs, but the other side still had plans for Sarah because they brought her sister through just in the nick of time. And I don't know if he has the sister who's passed, or if it's she who has the sister who's passed, but there's a sister vibration that they want me to acknowledge as well. I, I, I do. Have what? I have a sister that's passed. You've got the sister who's crossed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Would you say that your sister's passing was a surprise as well? Yes. Completely. Because to me, I have that same sudden feeling. Oh, yeah. But I feel like it's almost healthcare related. Yes. In other words, like it was like a healthcare thing that you surprised it would happen to somebody so young. Oh, yeah. And... Do you have her monkey? Or her bear or something? Her bear? I'm assuming it's a stuffed. She collected lots of bears. It's more ape monkey gorilla looking than bear. It's not a bear. I know it's not a bear. They're starting to pull their energy back. If you have questions about the people that were coming through, please ask me because I'm going to lose them. They're, they're, they're pulling back. I just, I'd like to know how my sister passed, what it was from, how it happened. The way it was described to me? Yeah very simply, was that it was something that happened very swift, quick, had a healthcare feeling to me, um, which to me lets me know that it's not an event that would have caused it, but I feel like because of her age, it doesn't feel like, it's like a freaky thing that would happen to somebody that, that's young. That's how it was described to me. I don't know how, you know how she passes, I don't know, but to me it's as if like, you know, she went to bed and didn't get up. Like to me, that's the feeling. So, so I don't know, is that how it happened? Or? Yeah. Okay. That's how it happened. I mean, like that's, it's, it's something that to me feels that simple. The question more comes in with, how could this have happened? I do want to acknowledge that it's really important that you know that your grandmother is going to continue to see what's happening with you. She's very influential, and she will continue to be influential. Just don't disconnect yourself as much as you do sometimes from your family. You know, it, you, you have family, and it's nice, to, it's nice to kind of just kind of connect with it again. It's like she has to know you're, 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 you're good, you're taken care of. To pull the energy back. Well, thank you guys. Thank Thanks you for so us. much. We never, uh, we never got a, a, an official answer as to how she passed. Um, it was uh, not able to be de determined. Uh, so she passed suddenly in her sleep. She was 26. To me, it's as if, like you know, she went to bed and didn't get up. Like to me, that's the feeling. Because we've had no answers for so long. Um, you know, and I trust John so much, just hearing that um, is enough for me. It's just an amazing experience. I don't have any doubt. I don't have any question. I really believe that she came through. You know, that just makes me feel a lot more comfortable and a lot more at peace and to know that she's always there, even though I know that in my heart, but to really have it securely and to really know it, I'm set. I'd like to thank AJ and Sarah for opening their beautiful home to us as well as opening their minds to the process. I'd also like to thank Backstreet member Brian Littrell and his wife Leanne, whose reading was shown on a previous episode. But before we go, I want to show you a revealing clip where Sarah's sister exposes the lovebirds from the other side. And as always, please remember to communicate, appreciate, and validate the ones in your life today. I'm John Edward. Thanks for watching Crossing Over. Is there like a log cabin getting like locked 
out of or like a being locked out in the cold feeling story here? Well, what about when we got locked out on the balcony? The hotel. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't a lot of cabin, but it was cold. And we did get locked out. For a while? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And your sister had already passed when this took place? Mm hmm It's safe to say that she laughed her butt off at this. <laughs> We got into an argument, and I was in my underwear, and I took a pillow out there, and I was going to sleep on the balcony. She came out in her underwear and closed the door and said, we got to talk. Let's, let's not fight. What sliding glass door locks when you shut the door? The door locked from the inside. <laughs> Welcome back to Crossing Over. Here again is John Edward. Before the break, the grandmother of Backstreet Boy, A.J. McLean, came through, along with the grandfather of his fiancée, Sarah. A.J. was able to validate the stern but loving energy I felt around his grandmother, who made it abundantly clear that she's still the same strong woman as she was in life. And we now take you back to the couple's home, where A.J.'s grandmother switches the topic to his career. I'm supposed to tell you that she feels like she missed out on some of what you would see as being your success, not your personal success, because she's making me feel spotlights. And when I see spotlights, that is something that to me is notoriety and celebrity and fame. If your climb to notoriety started and then she passed and then it went off, I feel like she wants me to acknowledge she sees what's happened with you. Now, when she passed, I don't know if you were away, um, if you weren't able to kind of find out or if somebody kept something from you until whatever, but I feel like there's a delay in some way about you finding something out regarding her. Um, and she's making me feel like she's okay with how things happen, just so you know. Now, your grandmother then is making me feel, and I'm sorry to put you on the spot, especially in front of like cameras, but were you picked on like a lot as a child? Yeah. Okay. And she's making me feel like what she wants you to understand is that entire experience for you was preparation for standing in front of as many people as you have to stand in front of and having to be critiqued or criticized. So I feel like that's exactly where, where, where she goes with that. As my reading with AJ and Sarah continues throughout today's show, you'll see that his grandmother Ursula and her grandfather Joe had a lot to say. And right now, I want to quickly share a few more of their messages, like this date reference for AJ. She's also making me feel like July is significant either to you or July is significant to her, but there's a connection to the seventh month of July or the seventh of a month, so there's got to be a connection my to... My grandfather's birthday. Okay. While that reference was validated, neither AJ nor Sarah understood this specific message from her grandfather. I also feel like somebody's either like one of six kids, there's like six in the family, so I don't know if somebody had six kids, they're one of six, but there's like a six connection that comes up with this. Now you might think a musical message for AJ would make perfect sense. But once again, this reference from Sarah's grandfather Joe couldn't be validated. He's showing me what I would see as being like guitar, banjo, something that would be a stringed instrument. After the break, We'll return to my reading with AJ and Sarah. But first, here's AJ to tell us more about the important role his grandmother played in his life. My grandmother was an amazing woman. She was more or less the, the mom of the house. My mom worked two jobs, and my grandfather worked as well. And my, my grandmother was the one that picked me up from school, took me to my auditions, cooked me my McLean in the morning, which I know she knows what that is. She feels like she missed out on some of what you would see as being your success. She didn't really miss my success in a sense of, of my, just my being in this business because, you know, like I said, she always took me to all the auditions and she was there for me when I did stuff for Disney and these little things. And, and when the group first started, she was still, still with us and she was with us up until, like I said, about a year and a half ago. Coming up next. A message has A.J. revealing his darkest fears. He's a brave man to admit that on TV. <laughs> yeah. When we last left my reading with Backstreet Boy A.J. McLean and his fiancée Sarah, A.J.'s grandmother was dominating the session. She talked about missing some of his career success and made a reference to his childhood, specifically how it prepared him for the scrutiny that comes with being a public figure. And before we get to one of the most poignant messages of the reading, his grandmother causes him to spill the beans about a lifelong phobia. 
She's also making me feel like, and this might sound really nuts, but I'm going to say it. Do you wrestle alligators? Are you planning on, like, going on an episode of the Crocodile Hunter? Or are you going to be going to Australia and finding yourself swimming in the swamp? I have no idea what this is. But she's making me feel like I have to tease you. And it is a joke about the alligator. Uh, I have a fear of frogs. I mean, it's something to do with amphibian. Um, I don't know. Uh, Takes a brave man to admit that on TV. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I, uh, I just want you to know that your grandmother is teasing you about an alligator. Not a, not a frog. It's an alligator. There's got to be something that would be... I ran over an alligator. You ran over an alligator? Yeah. Well, we all did, actually. We all did that day. We ran over an alligator on the way to a rehearsal. Did she act more like mom to you sometimes? Yes. Okay, because she's not making me feel like she's just your grandmother. She's making me feel like she's the person who's in charge. She feels like she did as good of a job as she possibly could have. But she understands that, you know... So sorry, it's on TV. She understands that you're very thick-headed and stubborn and sometimes you still don't listen. So just please, please remember that she imprinted upon you stuff that is like, you know, do the right thing and know the right thing and... But there's a, there's a, I don't want to say rebellious, that's not the word I want to use. It's like, you'll argue over the same issue. He'll agree with you, but he won't let you know that he's agreeing with you. And it'll take three days <laughs> for him to come around to the same exact thing that you were saying. Tell me. She's telling me to tell you to be patient because it's not a you thing, it's a him thing. <laughs> I could see the arguments now, like three months from now or three weeks from now. <laughs> this is what your grandmother was talking about. <laughs> This is serious. My whole just energy just, just dropped. You were sitting, you weren't driving, you were, in, you were in a car, you were... It was after she passed, and you had your own goodbye privately. Nobody knew you did this, and she's making me feel like she wants me to validate. She heard what you had said. Part of what you had said was an apology, because there was like, I'm sorry that I couldn't. I'm sorry that I didn't. I'm sorry that I, I, I didn't have the opportunity. A lot of this stuff, she's making me feel like you have to understand. She understands it was out of your control. She's making me feel like either you wrote, sang, produced, or did something in her honor, but it never aired, or it never, it never made it to people, like people never heard it. I was going to write a song for the funeral, but instead I wrote a poem instead. But it was supposed to be lyrical. Like with music? I wanted to do okay. that. Okay, that, uh, that would make sense. That's why I was like, okay, it's a song, but it's not. I'm like, I didn't understand that. She is making me feel like either her husband is now dating um, or that either he's very active socially. I, I, I see more people around him for some reason. Do you know, is there any reason why? Yeah, he has a, he has a nurse that's around him and he also has, he lives with my, with my uncle and my aunt and he's got a lot of family around him all But that time. has to be different from when she was here. So I feel like this yes. has to be a different, because I feel like, you know, it might have, maybe it went from just them together, and now it's like him and, and, and family. Yeah, it did. She it feels on. confident, like that's a, that's a good thing. It built on. Okay, yeah. that's like, that's a good thing. He does have a weakness in his leg, so I feel like there's a problem with the leg. He's had that for a while, from what she's showing me. The connections continue for AJ and Sarah after the break. But first, AJ reflects on his grandmother's passing. It's been a little rough, especially around her birthday and around Christmas. More so on my, on my grandfather, because, you know, they were very close. And they were married for 59 years. You were in a car, you were, it was after she passed, and you had your own goodbye. She's making me feel like she wants me to validate. She heard what you had said. I went to the grocery store to get coffee, and I came back. It was no more than five minutes, and she had passed in that period of time. And at the time, I was also heavy into drugs and alcohol and uh before i got clean and um i was a little under the influence that same evening because of the fact that she was you know on her deathbed went out to my car and sat in my car and kind of had my own little private moment i also did the same thing before that with her in the room after she had passed by by ourselves and i said a lot of stuff and the fact that she heard it all is awesome. She's making me feel like I have to tease you, and it is a joke about the alligator. And there's a place in Florida called Gatorland, which is a very famous tourist attraction, which is just gators. 
and one of them had escaped and we all each of us in every car ran over the one that escaped and I told her about it because it was funny it was sad but it was funny and that's the only thing I could think of that and my fear of frogs call me a weirdo but it's, they grossed me out <laughs> it really freaked me out more with AJ and Sarah when crossing over return